Sanjos, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. You must be wondering why I am here, because I am an arms manufacturing company. Well, I represent Indoration Rifles Private Limited and the CEO of the company. I am here primarily for two purposes. First of all, I represent my company for the first time in such a forum. And secondly, with my unique opportunity that the government has given me, I represent all three perspectives. I represent the government being 35 years in the uniform. I represent the customer having fired all the ammunition for 35 years. And today, for last three years, being the CEO of this company, I represent the industry. So, when I give my talk today, I'll be able to cover all three perspectives and I'll be giving recommendations in all three fields. I'll be giving recommendations for the government, I'll be giving recommendations for the services, and I'll be giving recommendations for the industry. Before I start, I must give you another unique thing which I add on today. Probably I am told I am the only CEO in the world who wears uniform. So I feel very proud to be in such a position. Secondly, I still remember my days when I was in Sri Lanka about 35 years back, when the weapon was given to me for firing, it was SLR. It used to fire single shot. What we did in Sri Lanka was cut the barrel. We did something to the safety sear and we used to fire two round bursts with the same. So from that particular rifle to manufacturing AK-203, which I head the organization today, it has been a strong journey and that shows the perspective and the progress which we have made in weapon making and also ammunition making. Also I represent today, standing here, is the changing perspective of the government. If a uniformed officer can head a private company, so you can well imagine what the government wants from the private industry. So I exhort all the private players here that you have the space and you have a huge space actually and I'll prove it. Before I give my uh, recommendations, I'll just tell something about the joint venture which I am uh, representing here. Ours is a joint venture which is going to produce AK-203 rifle, which is going to be the latest in this family of the Klashnikov rifles, which we have been using. I think all the army people know it, that we have been using for almost few decades now. And this is the latest rifle, it has never been produced in the world till date. So we have the unique opportunity and the responsibility to produce this particular rifle in India indigenously. We are a joint venture with Russia, with Klasnikov concern. We being the major shareholders in this company and on the Russian side we have the Klasnikov concern as our partners. In this project we are looking at complete technology transfer. The complete technology will be transferred to us and we will be producing an indigenous rifle in times to come. And the silver lining is that uh, most likely I should be handing over the first rifle by this year end. And we are mandated, we are mandated to produce 7 lakh rifles as, at, uh, as on date. But with the export license which I, I have got, I can export this rifle anywhere in the world. So, after about 32 months of technology transfer, the first Indian rifle and thereafter all Indian rifles of AK-203 family will be available to the world. So, the small arms manufacturer, the ammunition manufacturers have a great silver lining. Look at the numbers. 7 lakh I am going to give to all the three services. I have already expression of interest from BSF, CRPF and the police and I also have the foreign countries. As I look at it today, I have a domestic market of 25 to 30 lakh rifles AK-203 and if I combine the world, it will go to around 50 lakh rifles. It may take time, but look at the opportunities which you have in terms of ammunition manufacturing facilities which we need to create. We had the representative of MIL here who said they are finding it difficult also, also the customer representative who said that they are finding problems with their delivery. So herein lies the opportunity for the private industry to produce a part in this only small arm. 
I am not talking of any other uh, ammunition which we have been talking for last two days. Just in a small arms, you have that much of space. Not only with numbers, but also another factor which I'll cover a little later. In my project, I have the annual capacity to produce 75,000 rifles per year. And this is, I'm talking of only one shift. If the demand increases, we have the capacity to increase this cycle and we can produce about 1.5 lakh rifles in a year. We are going to use 100% Indian material. Not even a single piece of material, metallurgy or plastic or polymer is going to come from anywhere. This has been mandated as part of this project. So the private industry can be rest assured that whatever we produce in terms of rifle or whatever we use in terms of ammunition is going to be 100% indigenized. I am going to, like today, if I have to conduct trials for my own rifle, for the testing and other things, I am going for indigenous ammunition straight away. I am not getting any Russian ammunition for the trials also. And unique thing about this project is, after the technology is transferred, the joint venture, that is Indo-Russian Rifles Private Limited, as Indian company, has got complete IPR. So the exploitation of the technology lies with us. We have the liberty to produce any family of AK-203 thereafter. After this short brief about the project as such, now I just want to highlight, I've uh, gone through the two days of presentation, otherwise with my experience I can say, I just want to tell you what is the weakness in the present system and that is where the space is created for the private industry in the present paradigm. If you consider anything, anything on manufacturing, there are three things which are always there. There are people in the organization, there are structures in the organization and there is technology in the organization. Today, the biggest weakness in the organizations which are producing ammunition is the people and the structure. Not in the quality of people, but in the quantum of people. Like, please don't mind my saying, if MIL says that they command 25,000 people, it's not a, uh, it's good to have people on your uh, payrolls, but it is not always good to have too many people on your payroll, because that adds to the cost. So, we need to carry out reforms in terms of number of people. Number of people can only be reduced by use of technology. And you also need to carry out certain modifications in your structures. <clears throat> if you carry out modifications and corrections in all people, structures, and absorb technology as you go along, I think you can reduce the cost. And today with the numbers which I just highlighted only for the rifle ammunition, you can well imagine the economy of scale will work out so beautifully that the ammunition which is available to you for X rupees today will be available to you, if not anything, at least X by 2. I can guarantee that. Because of economy of scale, because of reduction of the overheads and things like that. And this is where I look at the private industry to participate in ammunition manufacturing. Don't look at the space which is created for you. And I, being the biggest supplier of the rifle, the complete inventory of the services is going to change. Look at the huge space you are getting in small arms manufacturing. Please utilize that. In the last, I'll just give the, my recommendations as I look at it to all the three organizations. First, my recommendations to the government. As I look at it, the government needs to loosen up the ecosystem. They need to uh, give away with the bias today which they have for the DPSUs. They need to open up the field for the private industry. They have to create competition. The competition will bring in quality and also reduce the cost. The government secondly has to go for not L1, they have to go for L1-T1 combination. If they go for L1-T1 combination, the quality is automatically assured. In this whole gamut, when the private industry is just coming in, there are established industry already there. What I recommend to the government is 
that initially they should give a little leeway to the private industry in terms of indigenized content. Because as I look at it, I have interacted with the industry outside, even for ammunition manufacturing. Their point is that since they are getting into JVs with the other ammunition manufacturing companies in the world, initially the government must consider a little lesser indigenized content in their ammunition and slowly they will build up to 100% indigenized content. So this policy needs to be considered by the government. And the last point for the government is to create R&D under one roof. Today we have one somebody who is manufacturing, other somebody who is doing the R&D part of it. All of us need to be under one, even if they have to create a ministry for that separately, which is doing only R&D, I think it will be worth it. For the services, I have point of rationalization of demand. Means today if you are contemplating your 100% or 90% demand going to the DPSUs, I think you should also open up, do an open tendering, let the competition come. You will get better quality at better cost. We should consider loosen your tendering procedure. We need to exploit the recently formed army design body which has been created. They need to be more participative with the private industry di uh, directly. And lastly for the services, I will recommend realignment of DGQA with the private industry and even like yesterday the CMD of MIL said that we are responsible for the quality and we certify it. I think the DGQA needs to move to the customer now rather than remaining in the MOD. They should get aligned with the customer so that the end user can carry out the quality assurance, not the DGQA aligning themselves with the manufacturing. And my recommendations last for the industry. The industry has to remember that today you are fighting in a space which has got huge responsibilities and huge opportunities for you. But that can only come to you with two things. First is quality. You have to be better in quality what is existing and you have to be lesser in cost. And all of us know, like users have pointed out in terms of cost, we are finding it difficult. I as a user can say that we are finding it difficult that costs are little more than what they should be. So you must reduce cost by bringing down the efficiencies in the system. And my last point is what somebody recommended yesterday that Indian Army or the government should consider concessions for them. Like if the gun is giving 50 kilometers, we should certify it for 40 kilometers so that other armies can buy from us that Indian Army has buy, bought. I feel there should be no consensus. If you have to compete in this world, you have to be the globally the best, even if you have to enhance your technologies. If you give concessions once, you are always falling for a lesser quality. So please don't consider any concessions for anybody. These competitions need to be at the global level. All of us need to realize this. This is what I have in terms of recommendations for all three of us. And since I represent all three, I take it it is for me also. Thank you so much. Jai.